Can I speak to Mr. Drew, please? Councillor Huggins. Uh, hello, Drew. Uh, I'd like your advice on the matter. Yes, your professional advice. Well, no, it's not something you can talk about on the telephone. Uh, will you be in your office tomorrow morning? Well, the sooner the better. All right, I'll call round then. So that's all settled then, Robert? Well, it looks like it. Well, the Christmas holidays will be here soon, of course. All the more reason for Midge to have company. Well, I'll bring her over as soon as Cavill gives the word. Oh, must you go? You've only just arrived. Oh, no. I only just looked in. I've got a husband and a house waiting for me. I neglect them enough. Well, thank you for coming and for offering to take Midge. You know that's no trouble. There was one other thing I wanted to ask you. Yes? Uh, it can keep till later. Oh, if I'm in the way. Oh, no, no. It's not important. Uh, well, there is one small service you could do for me, though, Miss Burton. You could save my weary old bones by giving me a lift. Of course. I practically pass your house anyway. But uh, if you're not ready to go... No, I, I, I think we've settled things very nicely between us. Your coat. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll look forward to seeing Mitch back at school soon. She blames herself for what happened, but you mustn't take Midge away. The rest of the committee thinks she's doing a very good job of work. Um, did you want to ask me something? Oh, no. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Would you care to sign it, madam? Yes. No, no, wait a minute. You must let me give you my share. No, Tatters. It was my idea to meet at this halfway point, so it's my treat. Thank you. What Thank will you have, black or white? White, please. How long are you going to stay on in Manchester? Oh, just the night. Mm -hmm. After you leave your train, I shall go and do my Christmas shopping, and then tomorrow I go to my sister's. What I shall do tonight, I've no idea. Hope to find a film. <laughs> it's not a bad hotel. I've got a room that's like the setting for a Russian tragedy and a bed that is so big I shall probably freeze to death before morning. But it's a relief to be away from staff and pupils and governors. Do you remember that time we went to Greenwich and we took you to that pub there? <laughs> You know, I can still see you with that sausage speared on your fork and your hand clamped round the glass saying, no more beer, my boy. Impossible, impossible. I'm a headmistress. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you know what it's like. Yes, I do. But I still love the unexpected and the spontaneous. Anything positive, wild and lovely. Even if it is only driving out to Greenwich to see the dawn. You'll do, my dear. Taxi for Miss Tattersall, please. Oh, so sit that time. All right, I'm here. I'll be out in a minute. I wish you didn't have to use this. Well, you seem to be managing. Well, I hope so. But it's a hard struggle. As I said, with teachers like Miss Sigglesweet, who couldn't cope, and Miss Jameson, who can but doesn't care, and pupils like Midge Khan, who won't benefit from education, and Lydia Holly, who would but isn't able to. It's very frustrating. Well, we're certainly not going to say goodbye on that note, Sarah. It'll always be like that, my dear, in one way or another. Perfection is something we struggle towards, but we never attain. You surely don't need me to tell you that. 
But thank you for reminding me you're good for me. Have a happy Christmas, dear. And I hope the the new year will take you a little nearer to all you want. Yes. Happy Christmas. Oh, Marley. Uh, yes, I've got some friends coming in. Friends? Well, only to talk business after tea. You might have told me. I can't be expected to have everything just so at a moment's notice. Only I'd have made it, as a woman in my position should. All right, my lass. You shall have one. Aye. We're all in our grave. Worn out, we worry. Sooner than that. If you can keep from falling off your perch a bit longer. Motor car as well, the good Lord willing. Whatever are you talking about, Alfred? Nah, well, never you mind for now. Trust in the Lord, and he shall show you the way. Come on, let's have some tea. My husband's just changing. I'll tell him you're here. With music, with dancing, with Good. Hello, Tadman. Now then. Drew. Aye. Ah, cold out, isn't it? Aye. Yeah, touch of fog hanging about here, you thought. Uh, well, have you got the stuff there? Aye. I've been down to waste. I had to look at our new roads coming on. Well, oh, they're pushing on with that fast now. We got that through, you know, Snaith Astle and myself. All part of the grand plan. Aye, I had a Werby Astle as well, just in general terms, of course. Uh, after all, it's reasonable for an estate agent to be interested in uh, possible new building developments. He invited me to a meeting around in Yarold. Had previous Labour friends from Kingsport there, denouncing slums in the city. They're going to make all right in housing, conscious, he said. Uh, very keen you were, very forceful. Mm, well, of course, he believes in what he's talking about. It's a good phrase, that, isn't it? Housing conscious. I must remember that. Uh, have you talked to Stillman? Aye, he's fed up right enough. Says those Aethorns are behind the interest on his mortgage. If he'd have known what sort of slut woman was, he said, and how she'd neglect that little shop of theirs, he'd never have taken it on. You'll part, then? He'll part. Good. Uh, then, Tadman, you'd like to take that on, I suppose? I want to be safe. I'm a family man. Mm, we're all family men here. Yeah? What are you putting in? I'll tell you what I'm putting in. I'm selling my life savings, and I'm uh, buying this plot here. Uh, Drew's seeing to it for me. Uh, the Ramington Panel Company will be glad enough to be rid of it now, but they won't if we wait much longer. Why don't you take over Stillman's mortgage? Well, hasn't Drew explained it? Aye. He says, if I buy the Aethorns out, you'll let me have Stillman's mortgage at 10% of the final selling price of the sheds and the land. You're a reasonable commission, don't you? See, I know those two young Aethorns. I've, uh, I've preached in Dalston many a time, and I helped to put them in touch with Stillman. But I don't want to get mixed up in their affairs, see, because it might look as if I'm acting out of self-interest. How much land did you say is covered by the mortgage? Twenty acres free old. And of course, sheds. Well, I'll tell you something. If you put machinery in sheds, you can claim higher compensation when council take over land. How much did you say Kingsport paid for their land east of Fleet Mire Dock? £240 an acre, and that needed draining as well. You only get tums less than 230 a year, even if it goes to arbitration. Well, I won't pretend it's not tempting. 20 acres at 240 an acre, that's... Uh... 4,800 pounds. And dirt cheap at that. Mind you, I'm a councillor, and I'm a keen housing man. I always have been. I want houses for the poor, and I want them cheap. But that is why I dare to gamble. I'm putting all my life savings, everything I've got into this. You're not on town planning committee yourself, are you? Yes and no. I'm on the housing committee of the county council, but I shan't be on the small joint committee with Kinsport Corporation that's dealing with this particular estate. And that's why I'm free to act. It's all above board. 